Another week of talking about a couple athletes who flew under the radar, let's jump into it. First off, we have to talk about Samson Colebrook from the Bahamas. Now in the 100 meters, actually all the way back on April 9th, so this flew under, over my head, but he managed to run 10.01 seconds down in Atlanta. This is a huge performance. It only makes him number 11 in the world this year, so not top 10, not top five or anything like that, but he ran this into a negative 1.3 meter per second headwind. That is a huge headwind to run into. And if we did a conversions, that gets him down to about 9.94 seconds in still wind. Strong, strong performance. But regardless of the conversions and all that, this is a huge performance because it equals his personal best of 10.01 set all the way back in 2019 when he ran it at the NACAC Under-23 Championships. But he also has some strong accolades at the 200 meters. He ran 20.56 seconds on April 15th, again, last month, and that's his second fastest time in the 200 meters ever. Now, he competed for Purdue University. He actually finished at Purdue in 2021 and he made it to the NCAA championships in the 200 back in 2019 and 2021. So he has some strong accolades in the NCAA. Hasn't hit that world um, level yet where he's gonna be competing with some of the top guys, but this 10.01 seconds shows that he is ready to potentially make it to the next level. He's only 25 years old, so a lot of potential and a lot of progress for Colbrook to be able to make. Now, let's jump over to the women's side where we have to talk about Bassan Hamida from Egypt. Now, she's very, very much under the radar, but she actually finished second place to Shelly Ann Fraser Price at the Kip Kano Classic in Nairobi, Kenya just last week. In that 100 meter race, she ran 11.02 seconds again to finish second place. So outside of being the Egyptian 100 and 200 meter champion for I think the past five or six years, she's really pretty much unknown for the most part on the world stage but she has run the 200 meters in Doha in Doha 2019 and she made it to the semifinals and she also ran the 60 meter dash at the world indoor championships in Belgrade this year in Serbia um, and she only ran it in the heat she didn't make it past the uh, subsequent rounds but this 11.02 second performance really is in line with her progression right over the past um, since about 2016 so over the past six seven years she's been making steady progression by about one tenth of a second every single year getting lower and lower and lower so if you check her personal best, you'll see that she is pretty much in line. And of course, this isn't sub 11, right? And sub 11 is really going to be what it takes to probably sub 10, 9, right? Sub 10, 9, sub 10, 8. That's really going to be what it takes to be in contention, to get a medal, to make it to the final, whatever it may be. But this shows that she is making progress. She also is only 25 years old. She's very, very young. So keep a lookout for Hamida in the one of those athletes who's kind of under the radar and might be able to surprise us more than we thought. Next up, we're still sticking with the women, but we're moving over to the jumps this time. Agate de Sousa, who competes for Sao Tome and Principe, she's only 21 years old. And in the long jump, de Sousa managed to jump 6.72 meters just last weekend. That makes her number seven in the world this year. Huge, strong performance for her. That's a pretty huge breakthrough for her as well. She had been hitting jumps in about the 6.5 meter range all through 2021. She improved to 6.64 meters in 2022, this indoor season, but this 6.72 meter jump is a huge improvement and really puts her in contention and conversation with some other ladies. Now, the women's long jump is extremely stacked, right? You have Esa Brume, you have Ivana Spanovic, you have Malik, Malik Mihambo, you have a ton of athletes who are really, really at the upper echelon, hitting seven meters and above. But Dususa is part of that group that's kind of just a tier below, right, with the 6.72 meter jump. And they're making their stamp in the event and might be able to challenge if one of the top athletes does slip up and get a medal, get on that podium. Again, she not only jumped this 6.72 meter jump, but also hit 6.64 meters earlier this year as well. So consistently improving her personal best from year to year, which can bode very well as the year progresses. And even if she doesn't make it to the world championship final, right, or doesn't finish in a top spot, she's just 21 years old. So she has a huge, huge career ahead of her. She has a long career ahead of her. Definitely look out for D'Souza in that women's long jump. Now let's end off with someone you might be familiar with, but maybe is a little getting a little overshadowed. Josephus Lyles, of course, from the United States. Now brother of Noah Lyles, the younger brother of Noah Lyles, and he very much does definitely gets overshadowed. Now, of course, he's not nearly as fast as Noah Lyles, but oh, a couple weeks ago he opened his 200 meter season running 20.20 seconds. He actually finished second place to Noah Lyles, who ran 19.8 uh, seconds in that race, who also kind of got overshadowed by Arian Knighton. But regardless, right? 
This isn't sub 20 for Josephus Lyles, and it only makes him number 16 in the world this year, but that's a pretty big improvement and pretty big performance for him when we're talking about a season opener. This is not only his fastest 200 meter opener in his entire career, but it's actually the third fastest performance that he has ever run over 200 meters. So a huge time for him. His two other fastest times, 20.03 seconds at Prefontaine Classic last year, and 20.13 at the Zurich Diamond League final last year. So we're talking about huge races where he ran his two fastest time. And now he, again, he ran this 20.20 seconds just behind Noah Lyles, but this is a low key meet, his 200 meter season opener. This isn't a Diamond League race, right? This isn't a big meet. So this bodes very, very well for Josephus Lyles. Now, the men's 200 meters in the United States is absolutely stacked. Between Lyles, Benaric, Curley, Knighton, Terrence Laird, right? All these other athletes who are hitting, right, 19.7 or below. So Josephus Lyles might not be in that conversation, but I think this does push him into a potential conversation of getting under that sub 20 second barrier, right? We saw him at Prefontaine when he ran that 20.03. Him and Noah Lyles were super excited for um, him getting a personal best. I think this is a great potential for him to see where he goes for the rest of the season. So keep a lookout for Josephus Lyles. Keep a lookout for all these athletes that I mentioned. Go in the comments below. Let me know if any athletes who are kind of flying under the radar and you want us to check out. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.